Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good day. So this is a topic for the sinus of the PWM inverter. So uh, before this, uh, we have actually uh, discussed uh, the square wave inverter and then the quasi square wave inverter. And based on what we have discussed, the quasi square wave inverter provides uh, lower harmonics content by eliminating uh, one or single harmonics component. Okay, but uh, since uh, even though the quasi square wave provide uh, the lower TH content, but still uh, in terms of the uh, THD standard it still didn't meet the IEEE requirement okay, for the harmonic content of the output voltage of the inverter. But okay, so this one is actually what we call the sinusoidal PWM inverter and compared to the other previous two switch uh, switching strategy, this is the most advanced and the most and widely used switching strategy for the inverter. So why using PWM? The first one, as you can see, it provides a way to decrease the THD of the load uh, on the voltage and also the, car and also the current. And if we add the low pass filter, so because right now we have the total, the THD is uh, lower. And when we add another filter, which is the low pass filter, uh, the filter design can be made very easy. Okay can be made very easy and we can actually meet uh, the THD standard requirement. Okay, and then the third uh, advantages is actually what we will obtain is that the harmonics uh, content inside the PWM inverter output voltage will be shifted at a very high switching, at very higher frequency. Okay, usually um, it, it will be shifted uh, equals to the switching frequency. So if the switching frequency of the inverter is around 1 kilohertz, so meaning that the harmonic will be shifted at 1 kilohertz. Okay, but the disadvantage of this PWM is can be... So normally know that when we use an advanced technique, so usually it will come to... A very complex control circuit okay to actually generate a switch okay and we also have a high losses uh, when the inverter is switched at very high switching frequency so this is actually the basic concept so the this waveform is the basic concept of this PWM and this concept has been introduced around 1960s uh, okay, so this PWM is actually uh, resulted from the comparison of the carrier waveform, which is this one is actually a triangular. It can be a sawtooth, it can be anything, but usually for the inverter, the carrier waveform will be a triangular waveform. And compare with what you call the modulating waveform. So since we, the output that we want is a sinusoidal, so the modulating waveform that we choose is a sinusoidal. Okay, so based on this two waveform comparison, we can see that uh, we will have the output voltage of the inverter to be in this pattern. Okay, so as you can see, the pass width, okay, is changed depending on the intersection between the com uh, comparison intersection between this uh, two waveform okay and as can be seen also this waveform uh, the pulses the the width of the pulses is actually um, has some information about the modulating waveform so as you can see here if the modulating waveform is reached to its maximum you can see that the width of the pulse will become bigger okay so for this PWM, uh, the most important parameter uh, in analyzing or designing the PWM is actually what we call uh, the amplitude modulation ratio, MA 
or sometimes also we call MI modulation index or sometimes also MA and the second one is the frequency modulation which is uh, MF or sometimes also we call MR so as can be seen from this slide the MA the range of MA is from 0 okay to 1 okay so MA can be either 1 or 0 and what is MA so MA is just a ratio there is no units so it is actually the ratio between the amplitude of the sinusoidal the modulating signal uh, over or versus the amplitude of the triangular signals okay and mod amplitude modulation is actually uh, will affect the value or of or the magnitude of our fundamental uh, component which is uh, we can compute by using ma multiply with the dc source while for the second parameter we call which is the modulation ratio so this one is actually a ratio between the frequency of the carrier signal over the frequency of the modulating signal so this mr will determine uh, the numbers of the harmonics okay the number of the harmonics and this is actually uh, analog comparator that we actually the previous uh, uh, method to produce the PWM signal as you can see here is uh, we use a sine wave generator and then we have a triangular carry here so we use a comparator to produce the signals okay and as can be seen from this waveform so uh, if the sinusoidal is higher than the triangular so it will trigger a positive VDC so as you can see the output is a positive VDC and which switch is on so this S1 and S2 will turn on while for when the V sinusoidal is lower for example uh, for example at this part here okay so when the sinusoidal is lower than the triangular we will have uh, output of negative VDC and S3 and S4 will turn on so actually if for your uh, convenient I draw this one so this is your inverter full bridge inverter okay so this is uh, your load which is a positive out so this is your S1 and S2 why this is so during for if the sinusoidal is is greater than the triangular magnitude so s1 and s2 will turn on and if the sinusoidal is lower than the triangular magnitude so s3 and s4 will turn on and it will produce uh, this v out uh, waveform okay okay so this is the harmonics of the bipolar so i think i skip this uh, uh, explanation so we just go through the harmonic spectrum of the pwm so this is the harmonic spectrum of the pwm the normalized the normalized value okay so we need that this um is actually a normalized value so which is uh, v n over its own bdc okay where this is a uh, v1 v2 sorry not v2 okay so this is your v1 and as you can see here okay so as mentioned before the the modulation index or ma will affect the value of the fundamental so v1 is actually ma multiply with it's BDC. So this is actually the spectrum for MA is equal to 1. So when MA is equal to 1, we can see that V1 over BDC is equal to 1. So that's why we have uh, 1 here. And the other harmonics, the magnitude of the harmonics, okay, is actually 
non-linear, there is no relationship. It's, it's, actually, there is no some specific equations. So it's a very random. So, but but the magnitude of the harmonics, okay, can be uh, actually calculate based on the table given below. Okay, so as you can see here, this is uh, the voltage versus a number of harmonics, which is N here. And this is the fundamental, so the number of harmonics is one. And as you can see here, see here the harmonics appear, okay, we at in uh, type in kind of cluster. Okay, so we have one, two, third cluster, for cluster and so on but this um, cluster for example the first cluster is actually appear uh, at harmonics number of mf okay modulation frequency so if the modulation frequency is actually uh, 20 meaning that the number of harmonics is actually 20. So the first cluster harmonic is actually appear at harmonics number 20. And the frequency of that harmonics, you can just um, multiply uh, 20, multiply with the frequency of the fundamental. Okay, sorry, not the frequency of the fundamental. So actually, frequency of the switching. Okay frequency of the switching. So you will have uh, the frequency of harmonics number 20. So it is appear in terms of cluster. So MF will determine uh, the cluster location of the harmonics. Sorry, the number of harmonics that will appear at the output. So if frequency switching is around one kilohertz, so you can see that the frequency of the first harmonic cluster will appear at 20 kilohertz, which is very, very far compared to uh, from the fundamental. For example, if the fundamental is 50 hertz, okay, so the modulation will appear at 20 kilohertz, which is very far. So we can actually design our low pass filter cut off frequency to be uh, e very easy okay so our cut off frequency is actually you can just uh, calculate by using this formula meaning that the value of l and c is very very small so meaning that your circuit will be very compact and lightweight in size so i think that is the advantages of pwm okay so that's all for the pwm